Okay, so they're still working on the parking lot today. They're painting new lines. Um, I was like, you walk a lot, don't you? I just saw you way over there the other day. I'm like, yep, gotta lose some weight in my tummy. So, um, let's talk about God. So, God is good. I don't know, people, a lot of people say, you know, there's no God, I'm not gonna argue about it. Um, my father has said he was an atheist and I think most people who say they're an atheist haven't even read the Bible, to be honest. Or they've come up from a hard life. They've got a lot of darkness. The word of God is light. That's what God says about it. Um, he says to walk in light like children of God. I was listening to that today. Um, walk in goodness, what is good, what is acceptable, in the perfect will of God. So, just like Joseph, you know, the story of Joseph, he had been really mistreated by his brothers. I mean, he was sold into slavery. I need to get in more details with this, but he was, um, he, hi, <laughs> he was mistreated. He was um, left for dead, basically. And I've been there, you know, having a forced abortion with no real care. I mean, I could have died. And then to have my father disown me, my mother the same way. Um, you know, it's kind of like, who cares about you, right? And God is the one who takes care of the orphans and the fatherless. So when you have parents who can't love their kids the right way, and in-laws who just like to fight, they got nothing better to do. I guess they're miserable. Um, basically, you've got God who's taking care of you. So we have such a good God, and for people to come from a dark place like I did, um, just have a lot of stuff happen to you so that you are like, I can't even see that there's a God. You know, you kind of, as a little girl, I had a great aunt who took us to church for a short time and I fell in love with Jesus. But after that, um, yeah, I had a pretty good childhood that God gave me despite everything. But um, yeah, there's a sense of darkness still. In my countenance, in my marriage picture, you can see the darkness in my eyes more than now. But um, a lot of people, just because they made choices and they've had a rough life, think there's no God. When actually, you don't want to think there's no God. You actually want a different perspective. You want to think positively. A lot of times families come from a lot of negativity and it's learned right because you can learn to think positive and it's you know it's looking at the glass half empty instead of half full instead of saying geez i'm alive today and i have another breath to live i have eyes i can see i can smell i can you know instead of naming and this is what a thankful journal is for Instead of naming all the blessings you have, you look at the bad. And that's half the problem right there. Instead of seeing that God is good, you want to look at the bad in life. So that's your choice. I mean, a lot of times for me growing up, I think seeing somebody worse off than you can make you more thankful. But you just, you know, it's, it's a muscle that you use. It's something you exercise, just like when you walk or whatever. You have to take your mind every day, submit it to truth. Be like, okay, what can I learn today? Um, a lot of times our words actually lead us to wealth in life, happiness, um, joy, and our words can lead us to destruction. So um, how you think is really what it's all about in life. I mean, what are you doing every day to build your faith? 
what do you do to get closer to God? He says in the Bible, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. He's not a God who's distant. So if you're just someone like, oh, here's the Bible. I'm just going to do what it says and go through the motions. You're missing the point. Um, I heard a sermon recently that was really good. It talked about our union with Christ. It's a relationship with him. It's not just, oh yeah, here's some knowledge. Here's some wisdom. No, it's coming to know Christ. It's looking at the stories of Christ. Understanding the Holy Spirit was, you know, the book. The Bible was written by the Holy Spirit. It's not just men who wrote the Bible. The Holy Spirit worked through these men, 66 books of the Bible, so that nothing would be inconsistent. You have different stories, but they they balance each other out. There isn't any contradiction. Um, so the more you study the Bible, the more you see truth. And I know, like, for me, I came from a family that some people couldn't read. So it's kind of like, oh, are you going to blame God when they don't even know how to read? Well, God shows himself in many different ways. I mean, just look at creation. He says in Romans that they are without an excuse because you see God's creation. You see the mountains, you see the sky, you know there's a creator. And it's only by your denial to suppress truth would you not believe there's a creator. Even a child can look around and wonder how they were created, how the world was made. So people, it says in the Bible, would rather walk in darkness than light. And that's why they suppress the truth, knowing the truth. And this is why I don't believe in atheism. Because you know the truth. You have a conscience and you know it. Um, unless you sear your conscience. Many people have chosen to live a life of darkness so that they sear their conscience. Their conscience isn't as easily pricked as it once was. Um, so we know, and God says in Romans, even though they knew the truth, they chose to worship the creation rather than the creator. And he talks about how everybody is going to be held accountable. Every knee is going to bow when Jesus comes back and we all, all are going to be held accountable for everything in life. Luckily for the Christian, God is gonna see Christ and his work he did on the cross all you have to do is look up history to know that Christ really lived on this earth. So coming from a family, a smart family, okay, very uh, skilled in many ways, but uneducated, the average Joe can know that there's a God. So for you not to believe is a willful choice because if you do draw near to God, He's going to draw near to you. I do believe God chooses people. Um, but you have to be willing. He's not going to force his way. You there, Put yourself in a place, you know, that you call on God. And you're like, God, how can you believe? God, have mercy on me. There is a hell waiting for people. We don't hear this kind of preaching anymore. We don't hear, hear a pulpit banging preaching. Um, everything's soft, light, uh, feels good kind of preaching. We need to understand what real sin is and the consequences. And we know even if like you take a soda from the store, right? You got consequences. That is... We see lives broken every day over sin. Um, so we need to know that, yeah, there really is sin. And what do we do about it? There's no doubt. There's no denial of sin. So what do we do about it? Um, we ask God to forgive us, 
accept him as our savior. And then we learn about him. And as we cry upon Christ, we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we walk by the Spirit. The old man is dead, the new is alive. So when I was first a Christian, I did not hear about the Holy Spirit um, or I wasn't aware of it in the preaching. But when I did hear about it being preached, my Christian life changed because I was trying to be good enough after being saved for God because I loved him so much. And there was that sense of legalism like, oh, you love God so much that you want to be a good Christian. And then he breaks you and teaches you you don't have nothing to offer him. You can love him, but you're not going to earn it. And it's a free gift. Anyone who believes in him will be saved. So I hope people hear this. Um, I have a heart for people to get saved because I know what it's like to have no hope in life. And, uh, and that was brought on by a forced abortion for me. I knew, um, I knew the guilt and the shame when I had a pretty, what do you want to call it, naive, innocent childhood where I didn't really, you know, deal with sin in my childhood. Uh, so when I came to the truth of what pregnancy and abortion really were, um, I just hit rock bottom and felt worthless. That feeling of worthlessness is real for post abortive women. And the enemy loves to play in that area with a woman. So, why well, I have a heart for people and just people who are naive and ignorant, like my dad, who's an atheist. Uh, you know, hard working guy, raised on a farm. Uh, probably didn't do too much wrong in his life as far as morally what people look at, but he's a sinner. And he's a sinner and he's on his way to hell. And this is why God's word says he desires none to go to hell. But he gives people a chance and a choice. I don't get it all between who he calls and who he has said has a free will and all that. But um, I think there's some kind of balance with the two. And I think just in case, you better be calling on God. I mean, don't rely on your knowledge or wisdom to try to figure out, you know, wonder if I'm the chosen one. Wonder if God's going to save me or not. Get yourself submitted to God. Cry out to him. Don't take chances and he will save you. So that's what I got, guys.